Day one of CES is still happening and Digital Trends is covering every aspect of it. Hi there, I'm Maud Garrett and welcome to more chat about the tech world. Joining me of course we've got Drew Prindle who's the Emerging Technical Editor for Digital Trends and we've also got Kyle Dirksen, the CEO of Future Motion to talk all about the one wheel XR, the improved make and model from last year's CES. Hi Kyle. Yeah. Howdy, how are you Check doing? this thing out. Let's talk through the One Wheel XR, because to look at it, it looks a lot similar to the first one, but lift the hood, so to speak, on this bad boy, and there's some huge improvements made. Exactly, so the key improvement with One Wheel Plus XR is much longer range. So, um, you know, the previous One Wheels we've, we've made have ridden about five to seven miles on a charge. Um, now we're pushing the envelope significantly. So we're up to 12 to 18 miles on a charge is what we're rating it at. And um, you know, that really lets you ride all day, right? So um, you know, now I carry my one wheel charger with me when I go places. If you have 12 to 18 miles, you don't need to do that. You just get up in the morning, you take off, you ride to work, you ride to the coffee shop, you ride to school, and you're you know, still barely making a dent in that 12 to 18 miles. I've got to ask a question. What did you have to do technology wise to double that range? Yeah, so our engineers um, have basically worked to develop a whole new battery pack, battery subsystem, new battery management system, and we're using um, new cells and more of them. So we had to increase the thickness of the board ever so slightly. You can see this little um, extra black band under either side. That's where we increase the thickness just a little bit to pack in those extra cells. But really, the um, you know electric car world has really advanced battery chemistry in the last few years. And so that's what we get to um, ride the coattails of and be able to pack a lot more power in. I feel like this is almost like the very adult, serious version of transport, like the, the, the um, I guess, pick upable <laughs> uh, vehicle, I guess you could say, <laughs> instead of the old scooters that we used to have when we were kids. Um, this is the big bad boy. And apparently you're testing this out in a very extreme way by riding one of these from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. Is that correct? That's right. So we, um, a, a team of our riders actually took off from Palm Springs three days ago, and they've been riding here doing a relay ride on the new One Wheel Plus XR to really showcase that it's, you know, it's not just for riding around in your backyard, it's for going garage, places. And so ago. they've been uh, yeah, making a lot of miles down the, the roads through Joshua Tree National Park and um, sending in some really cool photos and videos, and they're actually going to be arriving here in Vegas in the next hour or so. <laughs> they're not quite here yet, huh? <laughs> they're not quite here yet. Uh, they took a little rain delay because it was really the coming down. Was pretty rough. They got umbrellas and ponchos and kept riding. You know, the, the one wheel products um, are and have always been highly water resistant. So, um, you know, the board's no problem. You just get a little wet and cold when you're <laughs> zooming in the, you know, uh, unprecedented downpour we've had today. <laughs> I'm just looking at a video right now and there's an um, image of you without a beard and I could barely recognize you. That's just, just <laughs> telling the audience it is the same person in the video that it's at the table right now. Um, with this one, you were saying it's water resistant uh, so it can combat all weather. What kind of emissions are we talking? Is it going to have an environmental, environmental impact at all or is it really great for the environment? It's pretty great for the environment. So, um, you know, obviously getting people out of cars is a big, um, you know, goal. And really, when you have this kind of range, um, it, it is, you know, really, that's the kind of decision people are going to be making. Am I going to ride my uh, motorcycle or drive my car, or am I going to take my one wheel there? I think our previous products were more kind of competing with walking, right? If you can go two or three miles, like maybe I'll walk, maybe I'll take my one wheel. Now it's like just much bigger journeys. Um, on the impact side, you know, it's aluminum, with, which is endlessly recyclable. Um, we actually build the product in California. Um, and so we have, um, you know, a sophisticated factory there and, um, you know, meets all of the very stringent California, um, you know, sort of environmental health and safety requirements. So, um, but, and that's something that we're really proud of is building the product here in the U.S. in California. It really lets us control the quality and um, stay very close between the engineering and the ma manufacturing and the riding, right? So those three influences kind of swirling around is why you know, that's really where the push came from to make an extended range product, right? Riders, myself included, have been saying since day one, I want to be able to ride farther. And so now, now we can. Do you ride this thing to work like every day? I know that was like the impetus for starting this. You wanted to like hack your commute and come up with like a new way to get from A to B. Do you still ride this thing on the regular? 
Yeah, I ride it a ton. And, you know, I live within range of our previous gen product, only about two miles. But, um, you know, some of our other employees that live on the other side of town, you know, have a five or six mile commute. It was really on the edge, right? Range anxiety is a, is a real concern for electric vehicle users. So even if, you know, you can go six or seven miles, you don't really want to dig into the last mile or two because you're just not sure. But if you have the, the headroom of, you know, 12 to 18, a five mile trip is like a no brainer, right? You're going to do the five miles, you're going to be able to have, you know, come back, do the return trip, um, and still have, you know, some juice in the tank. And at short ranges like the ones you're traveling, you can go like a whole week now, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So my commute's about a mile and a half, and I go along actually a, a gravel trail that's beside um, the railroad track, which is abandoned. Um, and they're actually going to turn it into a really nice biking and walking path someday. But in the meantime, it's kind of this like no man's land. It's all rocky and rough. And so I put my headphones in, um, love the Apple AirPods, um, wireless, just like listening to tunes, zooming on my one wheel. And yeah, that's how I get to work if on a regular basis. If you're like Dave, uh, David Hasselhoff and you're a night rider, can we talk about <laughs> some of the lighting in here so that there's a safety element and people can actually see you and you're not um, ammunition for cars to hit? Yeah, so we're not quite rider. We don't have blinky, flashy things, but we do have integrated headlight and taillight in the front and back of the board. So blinding, blinding. That's very right. Thank um, you. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's interesting. You see it during the day, and you're like, oh, this nice light. But as soon as the sun goes down, you really realize that the visibility you get and the fact that the white lights are actually bright enough to illuminate the surface in front of you um, just means you're, you're not fumbling around like, I find if I go out to ride my bicycle, you know, I got a little light, but half the time it's not charged or I, I took it off or something like that. Here, they're always built in. They run off the main battery. So you just press the power switch and, you know, you're ready to ride. We are live at the moment, and a lot of people are chiming in in the chat room. Hi there, if you are watching us on uh, YouTube at the moment. Uh, Sebastian Alexander wants to know, yeah, but okay, can you kick flip it? <laughs> you know, um, the, the sky's the limit. Um, you know, kick flip, it, it does weigh about 25 pounds, so you're going to need some strong ankles. Uh, but people are throwing down all kinds of tricks these days. Um, you know, spins and shove it, uh, drops. Um, we actually um, did a major firmware upgrade last year, the Andromeda firmware, which um, really improved the way it goes over bumps and drops. And so now, Things like dropping off a curb are just like, you know, and you're, literally your grandma could do it, right? And then if you want to do some spins and flips, you know, people are figuring out some, some really cool things you can do on the board. It's really, you know, it's kind of like if you go back to the beginning of snowboarding, um, you had people coming into snowboarding from skating and from surfing, and they brought really different styles. We're seeing that with one wheeling, right? So you got some skateboarders. I'm not a skateboarder, but some skateboarders come in and they just spent their life in the park. They got all these cool tricks, so they do it on here. Then you've got more um, snowboarding, surfing background people. They have their own really carvy ways of riding. Um, and then you've got a lot of people who've you know, never really ridden any boards. And because you've got some dynamic stability in here, you know, people find it an approachable starting point. So now there's actually people that are learning to do those other sports after they've learned how to one wheel. <laughs> it's really interesting to me to say, like, oh, I, learned, I, I was snowboarding my first day on the mountain because I've been practicing on my one wheel, which is you know, pretty, pretty cool. All right, I gotta, I gotta back you up for a second there. You mentioned that a software update made this thing easier to drop off of curbs and bumps. What kind of things did you change to make it be able to do that? Yeah, so really the, the soul of the one wheel ride experience is the firmware. And um, we went back and actually um, from scratch rewrote a lot of the core algorithms that integrate the signals from the accelerometers and gyros. Um, and, um, and actually drive the motor. And so um, those are pretty sophisticated algorithms. And, and the interesting thing is that, um, you know, we're not building a robot. You can't really just like solve the equations and it works because there's this feel factor. It has to feel right. And so trying to square the, um, you know, the feedback from the riders that are like, bro, it's really cruisy, but it needs to be a little more stout <laughs> with like the, you know, electrical engineers that are talking about, you know, gains and integrals is, you know, that's actually part of it that I really enjoy. There's questions in the chat as well saying, it seems like this thing can tackle any condition, whether that's weather, snow conditions, and even different terrains as well. Can you talk us through what this thing can handle? Yeah, so one of the nice things about having a big air-filled tire is that it gives you some shock absorption and you can roll over all kinds of different things. So um, I mentioned my commute is over this sort of aggregate, like medium-sized rocks, really. Um, but you can ride on, on grass and on gravel. Um, we actually have a, a few places around the world now that are one-wheel experience centers where you can go there and, um, and 
they'll, they'll essentially rent you a one wheel. And one of them um, is in Hawaii, and you can actually go ride on their golf course, which is pretty dreamy. <laughs> I've also got Steve Jobs here. I see what you did with your name. <laughs> who uh, loves the idea but wonders, will there ever be an accessory like a seat attached to it? Because apparently for them, standing up's a little bit of an inconvenience. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, probably not on this, on this vehicle. I think, you know, there's a wide range of um, personal transportation products out there in the world right now. And I think what we're appealing to is people that want the sort of flowy feeling of um, snowboarding or surfing. Um, and so, you know, it, it ends up being um, people that are, you know, a little bit more agile and like, you know, ready to um, stand and ride. That said, you know, standing on it is, is pretty easy. Um, the, it's got a computer to balance you in the forward and back directions. So uh, you just need to be calm, take a deep breath, and uh, anyone can ride. OK, big question. How much does this thing cost, and when can I get one? Yeah, so the XR, which um, just launched yesterday, um, is at $17.99. And then the One Wheel Plus um, with the 5.7 mile range is uh, still in the line at $14.99. I've um, got Sebastian asking the hard-hitting questions here. Will he be able to pick up chicks? Uh, we can only help with so much. <laughs> I mean, presumably, you'd be able to ride with somebody, like, piggyback, right? Like, I'd you know, it'd still be possible, it, It's interesting. We've seen some good piggyback riding, and, um, you know, we've actually seen some pretty amazing um, acro yoga people <laughs> uh, balancing one person, doing a handstand on top of another, so... We rate the maximum weight for 275 pounds, but really, um, you know, it's a full metal frame, so it's really, it, it can carry more than that. We've even seen three people doing uh, some pretty cool balancing. That's <laughs> absurd. If people want to find more out about the One Wheel XR and we're, um, purchasing it as well, where can people do that? Yeah, they can come to onewheel.com. And uh, it's available for pre-order now. And actually, um, for the next 24 hours, uh, there's a launch promotion going on where they get a free Fender included, um, some other discounts, and a, actually a chance to win a cat skiing trip in the Canadian Rockies because, you know, the experience of riding powder is what inspired me to build this. So sharing that with our community is pretty exciting. Right on. Onewheel.com. Kyle, thank you so much for joining us here at Digital Trends for CES 2018. Guys, the website's there if you do want to check out more about the One Wheel. But coming up next, we're going to be chatting to Razor. They are announcing a new project or project, and we'll have all those details coming up soon.